right now, we're going to be starting what is the most important part of our celebration of Thursday evening, which is the presentation of the Graduate of the Year Awards. This year, we have two Graduate of the Year Awards. The first of the awards is going to be to the Distinguished Career School Veteran Graduate. And I'm going to hand the microphone over to our President, Muriel Adler, who's going to read through the background and what led the committee to make the decision to choose this individual as the 2016 Distinguished Career School Veteran Graduate. Thank you, Terry. I'm going to read the application. Um, unfortunately, Daniel Guy is with, not with us tonight because he has a, a, he's working. And as I read this, you'll understand that this is a young man that does not give up work. He gets all the work he can do. He's very, very dedicated. After dropping out of high school and getting a GED, Daniel joined the U.S. Marines as an infantryman. He had, he had known from a very early age that he was going to enlist. While conducting combat operations in Afghanistan, um, sound played a huge role in survival. For the average civilian, the speed of sound is mostly irrelevant. For the average combat arms infantryman of any branch, knowing the speed of sound is just as important as knowing how to use your weapon. When a bullet flies overhead and snaps, it is followed by a pop. That's, that we call a report. The time between the snap and the pop in seconds is multiplied by 340 meters in order to judge distance. For example, if there is a two second delay between the snap and pop of the bullet fired at you, then the enemy shooter is 680 meters away. Being able to identify and locate the threat is half the battle. Nature rewards those with keen ears. After his time in the Marines, he started school to become a geologist back home in South Carolina. It wasn't but a month before one of his fellow Marines was asking him to join him in New York City. He saw the opportunity for change, starting the next chapter in a new place. He moved and started working in short films while he was attending IAR. Roughly halfway through a nine-month course, he began doing location sound recordings and post-production mixing on short films with students attending the New York Film Academy. He worked for free for almost a year to cut his teeth and earn forgiveness, assuming he would make a few mistakes along the way. After his confidence increased, he began advertising through word of mouth from all the work he had done, and that led to a recording led to reporting a podcast for The Daily Show, after which he was invited on as a hire at the production company that handles all of The Daily Show's field work. This led to Colbert's Late Show, Dr. Oz, Fox News, ABC, CBS, Fan Portal, and more. He ended up working so much that he had to take a leave of absence. Upon returning, he finished his program, and his next step was starting a company. A group of eight combat veterans came together to form a production company, Tomahawk Pictures. Through Tomahawk, he has been working all over the East Coast for both veteran-oriented media as well as commercial media. So it's really my pleasure, and I'm going to ask Norbert, the president of IAR, to come up and accept the award for Daniel. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I have to say that, uh, you know, this is why we do this. I, I, I feel a little unfortunate that I had nothing to do with this because the student graduate in 2014, I just joined the school five months ago. But uh, again, this is a re-attestation of why we do what we do. And seeing people do well is just uh, the biggest reward uh, that anybody in this room, I think, can, you know, be proud of. and. Uh, uh, so I'm very excited for this, and again, for I've, 
uh, was part of the email chain when the student said, I can't come because I have to work. And I would love to have him here, but you know, we get people in the workforce doing amazing things is why we do what we do. So thanks everyone in the room again for what you do. And thanks to the coalition for recognizing one of our graduates. And again, thanks for a wonderful event. Thank you very much. This is for the school. We also have a, a special presentation for the school to be able to display on its walls at the institution itself. Uh, congratulations to the Institute of Audio Research on the occasion of its student, Daniel Guy, being chosen as distinguished career student. So that's your award. <laughs> Okay. And now we have the honor of doing the presentation to our second honoree. This is the honoree for Distinguished Outstanding Career School Graduate for 2016. And this is a nominee that should have graduated at least two years ago, so has an established uh, track record of successful uh, involvement in the particular field for which they have studied. And this is an award, as with the Veterans Award, that is granted and approved through the Planning Committee. You saw them introduced last night. The Planning Committee sits and deliberates, and this is perhaps the most difficult and serious thing that they plan. I mean, we have a lot of fun planning the event, yeah, but making these play. choices, we don't laugh when we do this. these choices are tough. They're very, very tough because the nominations that come in from schools throughout the state for these types of awards are really very humbling and they're, they're wonderful to review. And so many of these really are, are other individuals who we would truly love to honor, but these were two outstanding honorees this evening. So, now, the Outstanding Career School Graduate for 2016. After I received my enhanced degree in mechanical engineering, in Hungary, I felt I was being called for a higher vocation. I entered the seminary and was ordained a Catholic priest in the year 2000. I served the Diocese of Eger, Hungary for eight years. After much discernment and prayer, I realized that the life of a priest was not for me and in 2009, I came to the United States to study English for three years. During my time as a student, I met my wife, and we married in 2012. My skills, theological education, and work experience from Hungary did not translate into employable skills in the United States. The only job I was able to secure was working the night shift as a general merchandise clerk, a stock person for Stop and Shop Supermarket. I quickly realized that in order to obtain a satisfying and rewarding career in the United States, I would require more education or technical training. In 2012, I enrolled in the Refrigeration Institute's 450 hours of hands-on training in refrigeration and air conditioning. The school took me and gave me a new lease on life. They opened doors for me, and I never thought that I never thought would be possible, coming to a new country and starting all over again. I was learning valuable skills that I knew would lead me to a truly rewarding career. During my time at the Refrigeration Institute, I received my EPA 608 certification. Before I graduated, through their job placement program, I began working for Donnelly Mechanical as a helper in their HVAC service and maintenance department, becoming a member of Steamfitters Metals Trade Union, Local 638. I was recognized by Donnelly senior technicians, foremen, and managers for my knowledge, dedication, and hard work, and they selected me as the first helper to work in the HVAC construction department. For many years, the construction technicians had requested the assistance of a helper, and I was honored to be the very first selected. 
After my graduation working at Donnelly and wanting the best for my family, I decided to continue my studies with the Refrigeration Institute engineers training. The hours were long working all day and going to school at night, but the teachers worked with me one-on-one -on -one during the breaks and between shifts. The director of the school personally tutored me to ensure that I was prepared to pass my licensing exams. I earned my New York City Refrigerating Systems Operating Engineer Certification Q99. With health insurance as a priority, I continued working for Donnelly Mechanical until after the birth of our first child. I was eager to advance my career and put my operating engineer license to good use, as by then I was almost 40 years old and needed more stability than a helper position could offer. After telling the school that I was ready to move forward to an engineer's position in 2014, I was hired as a building engineer for the newly constructed Park Hyatt Hotel in New York City. As a founding member of the engineering department, I have worked in all aspects of engineering at the hotel. In the spring of 2015, I was recognized by the Park Hyatt Hotel Management for my hard work and was named the employee of the quarter. I am a proud member of the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 94, via the Hotel Trades Council. Now I have two daughters. I am truly blessed to have settled into a rewarding and most satisfying career as an operating engineer in the United States. I owe the success in my new career to the kind and loving staff at the Refrigeration Institute and to the support and encouragement of my wife. Without their support, encouragement, and guidance, none of this would be possible. I would still be working the night shift at Stop and Shop. Now I have a career that my family and I can be proud of. I am delighted to call forward Joseph Body, the Refrigeration Institute, the Cool School, date of graduation, May 17th, 2013. Joseph, come on around. Thank you, coalition, for this incredible, homoring honor. I came to the United States in 2009 from Hungary with the intention to improve my English. Six weeks after I arrived in New York, I met with my wonderful wife and started to plan my new life in the United States. My former education, career, and training did not translate into employable skills in the US. At the start of our marriage, the only job I could find was stocking shelves at stop and shop supermarket for minimum wage. It was clear I needed vocational training to learn a trade that would enable me to support my family. When I began taking classes at the Refrigeration Institute, I find current teachers and staff who were dedicated to helping me embark on a new career. Frank Talti, the director of the school, took a personal interest in my success and personally too toward me as I prepare for my operating engineering license exam. Attending classes all day and working all night was not easy. The faculty staff, administration, and students at the TRI motivated me to carry on. Upon graduation, I was hired as a helper at Denali Mechanical 
where I became a member of the Steamfitters Union Lokaya 638. Entering this new field at almost 40 years old and with a baby on the way, I needed to quickly take steps to advance my career. The administration of 3RI continuing to have my best interested heart helped me to secure a job as an operating engineer at the newly constructed Park Hyatt New York Hotel. I am currently a member of the Hotel Trades Council and know after the recent birth of our second child and the help of the TRI, I hope to move over to a local 94 commercial building in the near future and Thanks to a loving support, I received the Refrigeration Institute. I have a career that my family and I can be proud of. Thank you very much. Stay up here, stay up here. Thank you. You know, as everybody knows, the Refrigeration Institute is a family, family friendly and family school. And that's why it's just as important to have this Patricia up here alongside of this guy, Frank, because she works and helps out the whole team, too. Congratulations, I too, Patricia. Thank you. But could I just say something? Of course. This is just a really example, I'm sure, of every school here of the quality of the people that we get in our schools. And I think that's so important that we recognize people who have such a great quality and really they don't, and Joe is somebody who obviously had years and years and years of college training, but it took one of the career schools to find him his career in New York State and in America. And it's hard for people coming from other countries and this, I'm sure the sector is not just always full of people with social problems that stem from a difficult life here, but for people coming from other countries who are trying to uh, adapt to a life in a new country and make a home for their families here and uh, meet quality people from this place too. So, Outstanding. Yeah. So, well, so well said, Patricia. Thank you so very much. Welcome, Joe. Congratulations. Thank you. So Thank Thank you. You. Uh, you too. <laughs> Frank. Well done. <laughs> you know, we do this every year. There are so many students who don't get the awards. I've been in proprietary education for more years than I want to count. And when I think about some of the students that have gone on from the various schools that I've been in and the wonderful careers that they've made, the lives that they've made for themselves. And I remember um, I was with a drafting school for a while, 154 West 14th Street, and I was walking on Fifth Avenue and I became surrounded by this group of young men. And a policeman came over and he said, are you okay? And I said, oh yes, yes, these are my former students. And they just couldn't wait for each one to tell me how wonderfully they were doing the jobs that they got. It was just, it was such a moving moment for me because it made it real. And I know that the people who graduate from all of our schools Every one of them is a success story. So as I said last night, stay strong. Don't let them get you down. We're going to keep doing the wonderful work that we do.